Film Courage, the radio show. We're outside the studio with Lucas McNally. It's awesome to be able to meet him in person. Like we said earlier, it's like we're meeting a celebrity and we're, we're very excited. Um, you may remember Lucas's campaign, You're Without Rent, on Kickstarter, and uh, he's been going across country taking uh, set photos, volunteering his time. Um, he's also um, director of Upcountry, mm -hmm. and we will be screening his film Blanc de Blanc tonight. Very excited about that. Um, but we had uh, one question come in while we were on the uh, radio with uh, MJ Sly, our guest for today, and it was from uh, Matt Crowell. Croyle. Croyle, I'm sorry, Matt Croyle. It's at Matt Croyle on Twitter. And uh, his question was, what's been the most memorable part of the Year Without Rent uh, campaign so far? Can you tell us? Well, and hi Matt, how are you? Um, I've known Matt for like a really long time. Um, I don't know, five, four or five years, I don't know, something like that. Anyway, um, probably the most memorable thing so far comes from the f first production. Uh, Matt's and Tomlin's Dream Lover, which the trailer is out now and looks fantastic. Um, we had this situation where we had to build this endless bed thing on a soundstage. So it's like four mattresses all put together with like sheets going up. And then we had a woman in makeup for six hours to become a monster. And then we had a sex scene, and then the monster is involved, and it's a whole thing. But it was really the weirdest day that you could think, imagine on an independent film. And like nothing has really gotten close to that in terms of just pure, like one day of pure insanity. Um, or as I went on, um, Marty, I was on Marty Lang's project right after that editing and they were trying to edit together fart noises. And they were complaining that there was no way they could compete with the monster um, sex scene thing with their fart noises. So I mean, nothing has really gotten close to that quite yet, although we did film like right next to the uh, Golden Gate Bridge the other day, which was kind of cool. Wow. That was a lot of fun. And I almost got, uh, customs wouldn't let me to Canada for a little while. So that was interesting. Um, Why? Well, my passport got lost. And so, not lost, my passport got damaged in my car because I think I left a window down or something. So I had to get a new passport and it was a whole big mess. Then I got there and my car is full of stuff. And they're like, well, why are you coming to Canada? And I'm like, well, I'm volunteering on this film project. Like, how do you know these people? Oh, I know them through Twitter. Because it's the perfect Victoria Westcott's thing. And they're like, what do you mean you know them through Twitter? And they started asking questions. And they took my phone, and they had me go in and talk to the person. And they're like, they're like, what do you, like, what do you do? I'm like, well, I work for Film Courage. I work for Filmmaker Magazine, all these places. And they're like, so you work for them? I go, no. And they're like, well, how are you doing this? I'm like, well, we've crowdsourced funded it on Kickstarter. She's like, so you work for Kickstarter? No. So, does Kickstarter pay you? No. And I had to explain uh -huh. crowdfunding to her, and I explained Filmmaker Magazine and Film Courage and all this stuff, and it took like an hour. And they made me go sit down, and then she's got my phone, I come back and she's reading my emails. Wow. And she's like, well, what's, who's this Mike person? Because Mike Babiars, or I forget how to say his last name. I'm like, oh, that's just somebody else I know in Vancouver, and we're gonna, you know, get some food tonight. It's like, well, how do you know? I'm like, I know him through through Twitter. It was the whole, it just started all over again. And so the lesson to tell people you've met some, these people at film festivals, I think that's the trick. Don't give them your phone. One, two, tell them you met at a film festival because then it's like a real life thing. I think they thought I was gonna move to Canada or something because huh. my car looks like someone who's moving. But then coming back into the country was easy. The guy's like, where are you going? I'm like, Seattle, and told him where I was coming from. I'm like, I'm on a long road trip. He goes, all right, whatever. <laughs> wow, that's really amazing. That's that's some story. It reminds me of a scene in the movie Gotcha. Did you ever see that movie? Oh, oh okay, where well, he's interrogating. Anyway, off the, off the subject here. Um, one question I wanted to ask you was um, a quote that was actually on MJ Slide's blog, mm -hmm. and it was by Jim Jarmusch, and it was basically about how kind of all artists are thieves. Yeah. And he says, um, don't bother concealing your thievery, celebrate if you feel like it. Um, and he takes a quote from uh, Jean-Luc Goddard, it's not where you take things from, it's where you take things to. So it's a beautiful quote. How would you feel about someone borrowing from your work? Um, what if someone does a year without mortgage and they go on this thing <laughs> and they, they volunteer their time on film sets? Yeah, I mean, it's really, isn't it? it's a question of um, admitting it. You know, I mean, I'm I'm a big I, I don't like Tarantino like at all, 
because I think he steals from people and like pretends that he doesn't or something and likes to act like you know it's this great new idea he had and it's just you know a good art film because that's he's like Pulp Fiction you watch Pulp Fiction and then you watch um, Band Apart and you go I've seen this movie already why have I why have I seen this movie and then you go oh I'm watching Pulp Fiction but the original version way back when so um, you know I, mean, I don't think I would have a problem with it I I had with Blanc I had a thing where it looks like it got stolen, but I think it was so outlandish that I can't imagine how it got stolen. But, and I, because we weren't going to mention, we want to save this for tonight, so you'll have to watch Blanc tonight, and then see if you can figure out which Oscar-winning film then did the exact same thing we did that was filming after our movie was playing in theaters, or a theater. So, I mean, that was really weird, and it was one of those things where I'm sort of watching the movie going, oh, okay, whatever, and I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> what rough. the hell is this? Okay. How do I respond to this, you know? Like, like what do I do? But and there's nothing you can do, so you just sort of, you know, you need to get all hung up on it, I guess, or you can just sort of move on. And... Cool, we'll save that, that for the... Like an explosion? It, yeah, I think someone's watching movies in the next room here. Oh, okay. Um, so we'll save that for the Q&A discussion. Yeah, so after people will have to tune in. On filmcourage.com or Facebook Film Courage. Um, one last question that I have is, mm -hmm. how are you balancing all of this? I mean, you are just a content beast. I mean, you put up just amazing posts, like, you know, every three days, or I, I don't know, sometimes I don't even really more. sleep very much. How, how are you balancing all this? Well, the thing is, when you're not when you're on the road, you don't really have a life because nobody's calling you to come over for dinner and <laughs> nobody's like, oh, come hang out with us because you don't do anything else, you know? And so I've gotten pretty good at working on stuff on set because there's always that downtime on set. Oh, I see. So I have my trusty bag here that has everything in it and so I can edit photos on set usually and I mean, I'm really behind actually. I still owe, I don't know, like 10 things, like 10 things that I have to post okay. still. So, you know, if you have a 12 hour day and then you have a couple more hours on the tail end of that where you can work on stuff, I'm pretty good at writing those things pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. They'd be better if I wrote them less quickly, but there's so much stuff to write that it just, you know, I try to get something every other day if I can. Yeah. Well, you do have plans. We're going to Subway together. Right. So, he is being invited out for lunch. This is the most social life I've had <laughs> in months going to Subway. This is fantastic. <laughs> it's because it's not the uh, break on a film set, and for that I don't even get to go to Subway. You know, it's like they take excited. the Subway order and they bring the Subway right. to the set, so I don't even get to leave. Right. Well, we will get to enjoy the dining experience at Subway and it's chips classy. and a drink, a whole meal deal, and it'll be a good time. So. Yeah, thank you. And then we'll do the Q and A, and then there will be panels, and it will be like the coolest thing to ever happen to indie film ever, minus other cool things. And uh, then I'm gonna go back on set. That's right. So you have a call time right afterwards. My or, the, or just well, the call time? time is like seven, okay. so that's not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. So uh, my goal is to not let Nathan Cole get me drunk. Okay. And then get back because we're filming in a seedy hotel outside. And I have somehow gone from helping out to being the department head of lights <laughs> <laughs> in this movie awesome. in like two weeks. So, promotion. you know, I, I, probably, I probably should be there for that. Okay. Because the light department is me and a PA. So, and I don't think he knows how to run the lights. So this should be interesting. We'll see what happens when I get there. All right, very memorable LA day. Well, thank you, Lucas. Yes, yeah. thank you.